how cool my dog is. I mean, she's not just cool, she's the coolest dog in the world. She was voted the coolest dog in the world. I think like 400 days in a row now? Something like that. Boy, time flies. She's about 15 months old, I think. And I got her, well, we got her about a year ago, and let's just say she's been a great companion. She's been a good dog. And it's good to have a dog back in the family again. I wish she would have got to miss or to meet Juno, but yeah. She's a good doggy. Pretty good listener for a husky, all considered. Are you in your chill zone, girl? Huh. You want to earn a treat? Your ears perk up, huh, for that? Yeah, good dog. Good doggo. Good doggo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Want to say hi? You say hi to the camera. Say hi. Hi. And, uh, wasn't even really prepared to start this video because I hadn't done much thinking, but uh, it was going to be along the lines, something along the lines of uh, You Have Mental Problems, and the title would be a, a working title as a joke, but uh, the fact that we all have mental issues to work on, whether they be <laughs> um, something that's a, a severe mental disorder that causes us problems in our personal life interacting with people, or whether we are just an upstanding citizen who everything is fine in life except for our underlying hidden secrets about who we are and um, <clears throat> perhaps people have a shopping addiction or they're addicted to power, control freaks. They're some of the worst types of people. The ones who always have to control the situation, uh, it's usually because they don't have any control over their own lives. Just like the people who are... Uh, generally angry at the world and can't cope with change. It's be, it's something that everyone faces, but some people seem to act as if they're the only ones who face it. And I'm sure you all know people like this. Uh, the people who, when they have a problem in their life, they think that, uh, you know, whether they lost somebody they loved or whether they faced a job loss or or just have doubts about themselves or they don't feel the same motivation they used to, they act as if this is something that, um, you know, they're devastated by it. Like they're the only ones that face this. And I think this is why it's important to talk about any types of mental problems that we may have. And when I say problems, I just mean anything within our psyche that holds us back from our properly living to our full potential, I guess. And that's subjective because what does it mean to live to your full potential? So let me give you an example of, you know, where I'm coming from as I made a video yesterday talking about ticks and Tourette's, not ticks as in ticks on your skin, but ticks as in twitches and people's natural um, tendency to uh, have these mental ticks as well as physical ticks. Uh, mental ticks would be thought patterns or obtrusive or intrusive thoughts thoughts that you have that you don't want, for example. Um, I learned long ago, one of the most valuable lessons I ever learned is there's no bad thought. So this is something that I've heard a lot of people talk about. They they're down on themselves because they, th they think negatively or something. It's like, look, you're going to go through times when you feel a little bit down. It's okay to feel negative time. Sometimes you can't spend your whole life focusing on all the problems in the world, of course. But there are moments where we just need to complain, right? Where we just need to say, okay, this bothers me, I don't like this, or, you know, this part of my life I'd like to change. And then we move on. But the idea that we're the only ones that can't stand change is ludicrous. You'll notice a lot of folks accuse, say, the boomers of the boomer generation, you know, the older generation of being unable to change with the times. But this has always been true. Every generation. And there's a reason for this, and it's not a bad thing. It's the reason why they say as people become older, they often become more conservative. And I'm not talking about political beliefs. I'm talking about conservative by definition. The reason why conservatives exist. It's not because they follow a conservative ideology. It's because they're conservative-minded. 
they want to keep things the way they are because it's comfortable, because it's what's worked for them. And when things start to change, some people freak out. They just don't know how to cope. Whereas the modern generations have, it's been like the mantra of Gen X and, and millennials is that change is life, right? That we have to deal with it. In other words, if you've already established your life as a certain type of person and then technology makes your job irrelevant or your thought pattern irrelevant or perhaps uh, some new discovery completely conflicts with your old beliefs, you're going to shut out the modern world and say it change is bad and that's natural. But when it comes to facing reality, I think it's healthier for us to acknowledge that things do change and acknowledge that you've got to roll with the punches. Roll with the times. But that's not always so easy. In the last couple of years, there's been a lot of change in many different fronts, long before COVID. There's a lot going on right now. And uh, I think that a lot of people are desperate. They don't know what to do. And they can't ask for help or they don't feel like they can ask for help because everyone is suffering right now to one degree or another except the rich they're just getting richer as always but i'm not going to go into that it's easy for people to kind of pawn off their problems on the rich by saying oh look the rich get richer and the rest of us suffer but we all know we have to take initiative for our own lives which brings us to one of the hardest changes that i've found in life which is losing motivation to try new things losing that inspiration to jump on a new job a new career path you know it's a scary endeavor like for me when i lost my uh, ability to lift lumber as a carpenter it was devastating but i eventually overcame that but i wanted to get back into it recently and i applied for a couple positions sent out a resume and the people were like hey I'd, we'd like to hire you because i've got a portfolio of carpentry i've done it's what i know it's something i don't have to start anything new but there was lifting involved so it's not always that we want to change or that change is forced upon us, but rather that we're circumstantially obliged to change our career path. Or, uh, you know, if you're an editor and you can't read anymore, you could probably, um, or you go blind, you could probably listen to it, but you can't see the words, right? You need to be able to have a certain ability to do your career. For me as a carpenter, that means lifting stuff. But uh, that's just one example of many. I took it upon myself to always celebrate change, to always celebrate new things. And I think that I've, you know, I enjoy new music. I enjoy new ideas, new discoveries. But there's also part of me that's a little bit wanting, a little bit conservative, I guess, for lack of a better definition. Not, not politically, as I said, um, that says, I want to preserve my family's way of life and, and the good things that we have in our life. But I see that society is going to shit, <laughs> you know, uh, it's a difficult, there's so many angles I could talk about on this, but I'm afraid if I do, I'll go into complaining about the corporations, the, the way that the world works, greed, you know, uh, ca the caste system and, and none of that really matters to this discussion. All that matters is you, as an individual, deciding that you want to embrace what comes your way, or me, right? And I'm telling you this as another human being who's also experienced these feelings of defeat, helplessness. Even though I started, say, my herb business, my kratom business, after I lost, you know, my back went out as a carpenter, then I started losing interest in that. And now I'm getting back into it because I've, you know... I want, to, I want to know that I'm making a difference in this world somehow, so unless I can find the best product, then I kind of lost my motivation on that. In the same way, a lot of people realize that the career path that they had chose or the company that they work for maybe isn't up to par with being respectful to either its employees or the environment, and you get caught in this kind of catch-22 of working for a shitty company but needing to make money. And uh, a lot of us are, are, are obliged to do things that we don't want to do in order to get by. And hopefully that doesn't lead to people cheating others and harming others. Unfortunately, most of the greed that goes on is with the larger companies. 
You know, most small businesses, it's interesting, most of the small businesses I've dealt with, mom and pop businesses, know that everything relies on word of mouth. So they do their damn best to help the customers. Then the larger a company gets, the less, you know, incentive they have to give a shit. And uh, therefore, they just kind of, their customer service just goes to shit. And uh, that's what we see with companies like Verizon and Comcast and, um, you know, the huge burger chains. It's a totally separate video I was going to make about McDonald's and Coke advertising in the schools uh, in other countries with different laws. And just, there's so many things wrong with the world that it's easy for us to push our own inner angst out there and blame the way the world is. But we really can't do that when it comes to our own personal sanity. We have to find that within ourselves. A lot of folks say, the world's going crazy, the world's going to shit. And I say, well, turn off the news. How bad is it in your own neighborhood? Unless you live in some horrible part of Chicago or LA, which, <laughs> you, you know, or San Francisco or something, you see what you see. Um, but like the way people talk about Portland, you'd think it was a war zone. Now you can walk down there and it's just, another city. And uh, I think this is why we have a, a false image of the way the world is and how dangerous the world is and how much it's really changing. Whereas 99% of the people are just living their lives and doing the best they can to survive. And that when we realize we all have some of these same feelings, then it's easier for us to overcome them. So I'll leave it at that. I'll talk to you all next time. Thanks for listening. Be sure to check out my podcast, 15 Minute Free Thinking. And as always, if you want to support my channel, it's the only way I make anything. I think I made $4 last month on uh, through Google, through AdSense. I signed up for it because I was forced to. And uh, it was one of those rolling with the times, rolling with the changes thing. They sent out notifications to creators, basically just saying, you don't have to use advertisements, but if you don't, we'll probably put them on your video anyway, that we have the right now to put them on anything we want. It was like a... Uh, you know, a warning of what's to come that we're all just privy to ads, which goes along with the McDonald's and Coke thing, so I'll leave that for the next video. And uh, thanks for listening. You can support me on Patreon if you like. And God damn. You know what? Why does everybody act so stupid? <laughs> hey, everybody. How you doing? No, you're not one of the stupid people. No, of course not. You watch my channel. You've got a brain. You're a well thought out, well respected individual in this world if you watch my channel. Of course. There could be no other way. That's, that's the mentality you have to have in this world. You see, you have to get people behind you as an individual or a group and make sure that every other group is excommunicated. They are the bad guys. They are the enemy. You know, back in the 60s we had the Russians as enemies. Kids were hiding under their desks waiting to jump into a bomb shelter to worry about a nuclear war. And, uh, you know, then those damn Vietnamese, which we quickly realized maybe they weren't so bad, maybe it was us, and uh, maybe it was a coup, and uh, maybe it was complete bullshit like most of the U.S. wars since then. But, you know, we moved on. We moved on through our lives. Uh, we decided to be fooled over and over and over again as a society because, you know, as long as it's us versus them, it's okay. But uh, after the Iraq war, all of a sudden terrorism kind of came to a halt in the U.S. and we needed a new enemy. So goddamn if we don't just point the gun at each other, right? I mean, after all, it's not necessarily a matter of a government is telling people to fight one another or to argue with each other. It's that the people are choosing it because they can't find any real enemies, you know. <laughs> Coming to find out that people are a lot dumber than I want to give them credit for. That people are a lot more susceptible to fall for the bullshit. It's one thing to have some thoughts about a situation and put your thoughts out to the world. Like, well, I think that this might be the best procedure. And then a while later say, well, maybe this wasn't the best thing. But to not be willing to change your perspective on anything, like so many people seem to be, is ridiculous. And the idea that digging your heels in deeper is going to solve that problem uh, really isn't. Now, I even have friends who have said, well, now I know the Iraq war was bullshit. Yeah, I was fooled. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. People think that we want to have a good cause. We want to have a good purpose. But, you know, 
things turn out the way they turn out. And we look back in retrospect and hopefully we can judge the situation based on instead instead of our preconceived notions that we can actually look at something and analyze it rationally and fairly. And though I've changed my opinion on quite a few things, I believe I've always been pretty open about things that I'm not sure about, especially uh, politically oriented subjects, which have two sides to it. You know, I get it. I get it. I really do. I, because I put myself in other people's positions and I know that it's difficult. And I know that people feel like they're wronged and not listened to. But then there's part of me that also knows that a lot of people's arguments, a lot of people's gripes are complete bullshit. It's the poor me attitude, the victimhood, the, oh no, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm oppressed, I'm oppressed, I'm, I'm a poor, you know, I'm poor, I'm poor, or, and this goes for all races and all gender, both, whatever, I guess all genders these days, uh, for all types of people, there's always somebody who wants to use their, you know, their crutch as a victimhood and uh, to use that to their advantage. And so they kind of add to other people's roll of the eyes and frustration about even wanting to help other people. And the world is complicated, that's what I'm saying. You know, I, I think that most people really give a shit about one another. And I think that most people have good intentions in heart. But there are a lot of dumbass motherfuckers out there. Sorry to quote George Carlin. That's, that's a George Carlin quote, but it's true. Um, there, there are a lot of dumb people out there. When I listen to George Carlin do that speech, and if you haven't heard it, let me know. I'll post the link if I remember. But, uh, you know, he... You kind of cringe at some of the stuff that George Carlin says, but you can't really deny it either. And that makes it really complicated to, like, uh, to see that there's a certain truth in saying that people are just complete morons. But then there's part of you that wants to improve society, that wants to see a better world. So um, I'm not sure what to do about that. I just I wanted to, guess, point out that, you know, the absurdity of... Some of the bullshit that goes on out there with our division among one another. People want to make enemies because it makes them feel good, like they're on a side, like they have a team, like they're a team player because they hate some other group. And I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't work. You know, I'm no sage. I'm no old wise man. I'm 45 years old, but I feel like that's one of those lessons that's always stuck with me, that fighting doesn't solve anything, but the battle can be necessary at times to defend against the most extreme bullshit. Point being that if we're fighting about small values that, you know, are religious-based or non, it's nothing compared to the bigger picture of can we run around murdering each other or, or not. We have bigger fish to fry, and we fortunately kind of through a legal system that is way too cumbersome and way too much bureaucracy, uh, found a way to coexist peacefully somewhat. But that will fall apart if we can't respect each other for our own interests and needs. If a person wants to be religious, be, be religious. If a person doesn't, then don't. Don't force it in the schools. Don't force it on people. Um, with politics... If you want to believe left, you want to think that the right is great, so be it. But can't we just shake hands and not be idiots about it? Are we solving anything by descending into chaos? Just look around, look at history, look at the rest of the world, and you'll see exactly what I mean. It never goes anywhere. We'll see what happens. Be well. Front one. How about an eighth of the forbidden Skittles to start? Yes. I can support you. Thanks for coming to Purpose Channel, yo! Yeah.